you know, we were just looking at demos like back to 2017, 2016, yeah. doing a lot of stuff with image recognition yeah. for all kinds of different solutions, whether it's on video or image. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how that piece of conventional machine learning has evolved. Because like when we started, it was like OpenCV was the peak. We started off that path of recognizing stuff in images yeah. for, for that project you were referring to. Uh, we started off with chroma keying and identifying patterns and all of that stuff. It worked really well when we were training it and we were kind of doing it in the lab. But as soon as we took it out in the world where the lighting situation changes, the environment changes, it starts to fail. That's when we brought in the neural network based ones. Yep. It's not a probabilistic model. It still goes through weights and biases and multiplication, all that stuff. So it's still predictable and it, it did really well. Yep. And because it generalizes really well, because you can create millions of pictures and cre artificially create variations among them and move them, rotate them. And that's one of the crossovers with generative yep. AI too. That's where we were starting to mess with GANs, yep. generative adversarial networks right. and say, okay, here's a good set of data. So let's generate some training and build that into the neural network. That helped quite a bit on creating that all possible scenarios for that neural network to learn generalized stuff. Entire neural network for that's a couple hundred K, right? Yeah, yeah, it's literally, well, I, I think it was like 500 KB yeah. or something small like that. It was super tiny, but remarkably it has been resilient across the years now. Well, we've continued to enhance it, right? Yeah. That's the benefit of a model like that. You can control mm -hmm. when it gets updated, how it gets updated, so yeah. that you know you're maintaining that predictability. Yeah. So we update that model with that particular customer probably four times a year. Yeah. Yeah. We get some additional data in of both good and bad scenarios, and we go update that so that we can continue to enhance it. And then right now we're working with them and say, okay, how far out to the edge can we really push this? Is this on some kind of server at the edge, or can we push it all the way out to the actual sensors that are image sensors and push it all the way out? And in the last probably four or five years, there's been enough advancements in microprocessor and embedded technology. You can do that on very inexpensive systems, like an ESP32, for those of you who are, or ES, ESP32 S3, you probably want, if you're getting into the hardware world, to, or to a Raspberry Pi, which is a little bit more expensive. Um, and that's really cool. When we started doing this project, you couldn't push that far. Yes. Pushing it out to the edge, you have to be very, very purpose-built. You have to really trim the fat and not throw more and more neurons at it to make the layers deeper to you know capture more of the variation. Let's go to a little more of the history, because yeah. you know we, we mentioned we started with OpenCV, and there right. we were really doing object detection. Got it. Yeah. And we were doing that by chroma keying and extracting the object from the background, which was cool, but it was one, it was very system and inten resource intensive, right? It required a lot of compute, required a lot of memory, required a lot of time to go do it, to make it responsive. And then it was kind of sensitive to different lighting conditions. So yeah. then we moved to what you were describing, that neural network approach. And when we did that, we found out some other benefits too. Like we can train the neural network to be different around the edges of the ob image that we're detecting versus the actual core of the image, which yeah. gives us a lot more accuracy.